people see us or are you? Yes, uh, welcome to Momento Monday. Today is uh, June 19, 2022. Uh, happy Father's Day, Howard, and uh, all fathers. What's going on? How's life in uh, Coronado? Going for a run on the beach, you and me tomorrow, you and I, you and him. Sure. But what a treat that must be for you to run at a 12 mile pace instead of your six mile pace. Yeah, absolutely. I know. People, when I run with you, people always go, it's Howard and Gary Shanling on the beach. Exactly. And then you go, who's Gary Shanling in a Bulgarian accent? And people just go, <laughs> I thought he was dead. So uh, it's good to be here. You can just. Yeah. Maybe I'm, you know, I'm his son, who knows? You know what's interesting, Ivan? Is that uh, I had COVID in the Bahamas with no symptoms, not sick, and then I've got the flu and I feel like I'm dying. Wow, happens. Yeah, brutal. Did you get this flu that was going around? The strep? No, flu? no, I haven't. Knock me on my ass. I, five days. I'm never when, sick for five Recently? Days. This whole week, my first week in San Diego, I was just sitting in this chair complaining to uh, oh. the state. Okay, are, are you, is it safe for me to come tomorrow then? <laughs> Listen, Ivan, mean, it's never safe to hang around the Howie, Howie town. Yeah, I mean, how could I still be infected when I'm ready to run? I, I rode uh, 30 miles today. Feeling Good. better. Good. Yeah. I mean, I guess the, the market has been hit by flu too. Wait a minute, there's a bear market? It just feels like it was, a, I don't even remember anything. It's, the good thing about having the flu is I don't, I'm so drugged, I don't remember anything last week. So tell me what happened. Yeah. Well, hopefully you're not long a lot of Bitcoin and Ethereum and other stuff and Luna. <laughs> uh, so Luna, I mean, Luna's coming back, baby. I just feel it. I trust that guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so it seems like the market knew that the, the Fed is going to become more aggressive and is going to start uh, raising rates. Uh, in a more aggressive manner because you know the market started selling off basically a few days ahead why, why is kathy woods the only person who doesn't believe the fed has raised rates yet i don't know that that's her own deal um uh, would think you she... quit would you have quit would you have stormed out already if you were working for her oh it depends how much she's paying me right so, <laughs> oh my uh, god you're on fire so, today you're on fire um, so the fed raised interest rate with 75 basis points and it seems like at this point the market is uh becoming more worried about recession than about high inflation because even the oil oil and gas sector which has been the last remaining yeah uh, leading sector uh was hit pretty hard i mean right now xlp which is oil or gas etf is down 20 i mean this is the first 24 percent from its buying opportunity and energy for about six seven months so we'll see if people yeah if you're bullish we'll if people your chance. yeah this i actually i for the first time you know you mean i love it's a bear market but i so the strategy doesn't work in a bear market obviously but xle in a bull market you know i'm selling i sold a bunch of the 70 puts just full disclosure xle okay I so figured, i mean the xle is like i figure at 68 i can trade around this position if this gives up the ghost and it could because kramer was saying oil is the only thing you've known about two weeks ago uh -huh. I literally was saying that um so keep in mind that XO is, is structured very weirdly like uh, xom and cvx are like each of them is like 30 percent uh, of the index. i'm good with that yeah I'm and, good and that. the xop is the one that is like better diversified uh, on a small name with a smaller percentage allocation yeah um good but point yes. thank you good point but i was i specifically did it for that reason i prefer to own the bigger names or or trade around the bigger names yeah uh -huh. Okay, so uh, basically the last the last remaining leaders were hit pretty hard. Obviously, there many of them are still in an uptrend, so they might bounce. Um, well, they should bounce. I mean, I'm not saying who knows. Uh, well, in, gonna... a, in a bear market, you never know. Like, yeah, yeah. Again, energy is in a, a super bull market because no one has supply, or at least that's the narrative. Sorry, and um, you know, America. It's summertime. People need to travel, so a demand should stay should stay strong. But yes, you're right. This is like a market where nothing. Yeah, I mean, it depends uh, how far the market is looking. If the market is looking yeah. six six months in the future or nine, and saying, "Oh, maybe oil demand is going to drop substantially," who knows? 
Um, but you're right. In an evil bear market, it's like it comes for the last uh, person standing. Wh what? I mean, it's just so brutal. But like I starting to see some relative strength within broken tech. But if we look at the Qs, Ivan, on the weekly, I mean, they're, we're going much lower. Like in, a, in an environment where they're raising rates and that they seem to have given up caring about saving and they shouldn't care about saving the investor it was fucking fluff but um you just you had the original line there i mean we should find some kind of support right in here uh based on the on the uh what was it like the september 20 kind of lows but it feels like there's really no support until like 225 200 to 225 on the queues no, no one really knows. I mean, we might have uh, like short term bounces around major technical areas, you know. Like yeah, I mean, here. we're so far below the 200 day moving average that anything could happen here. Well, yeah, I mean, and big mean reversions happen far below yeah. the 200 day moving average. The crashes average. happen here too, as I've been saying. Exactly, exactly. We could have a huge mean reversion or we could be at 200. Nine out of 10 times, you know, there is a bounce, but, you know, the 10th time, you know, there could be a yeah. panic really selling. Just holding like, this market together right now is, is truly Apple. Uh, Apple, Apple, so self-contained in terms it makes its own chips. It's pretty secretive, um, and the iPhone has such a lock on you know the eight to eighty generation, um, and the margins are so good. But any kind of whiff, you know, from Apple and the stocks in the nineties. Even Apple is not recession-proof. That's what I'm saying. A yeah. whiff of that takes them to the 90s, a whiff of a problem. And uh, with that, Warren Buffett, you know, would drop 10, 15% of Berkshire. And the only good thing about Apple is we know Buffett is in there buying into weakness, right? He's 42% long Apple, 42% of his fund. Uh, it's his Kathy mm -hmm. Woods Tesla play. Yeah, but Buffett is 95, so you never know. So you cannot rely on that. So <laughs> he's 95. He looks I don't know. I don't know. He, he does like, look a day over 110. It's it's somewhere there. Um, yeah. he's a poster child for don't eat seize candy and coke and McDonald's into your 70s. Uh, um, which is kind of like rat poison. So so what are you doing? What are you doing? Because it's miserable. I mean, I'm mostly in cash, uh, just protecting my capital, protecting my confidence, uh, because we know that when the market, you know, gets uh, better on the long side, I'm going to be really aggressive and I'm going to make uh, good returns uh, very you quickly. Will. You will. And um, in this market, <clears throat> I just I just prefer to do less, just take fewer trades, you know, here and there, you know, take the occasional trade but with a smaller size. So not really looking to do anything aggressively. Uh, I mean, the next potential support for SPY is like 350. Yeah. So if there I is, see some- 350 on the spot. There's a huge difference between being down 20 to 30 and 30 to 60. And your whole goal now, as I tell a lot of people who are down, you know, 30, including myself uh, in my model, you know, kind of, it's very high cash, but still down 25 plus percent this year is don't get down 35, right? Find an up market, find a, some more easy pitches, trade around a few positions and just stay in the game. So you get in shape, make sales calls, you know, get yourself mentally positioned because we know what's gonna happen. You've got the Fed raising rates. Maybe it lasts six, seven more months. And I'm telling a lot of people that asked me, so I'll, I'll share it here. You don't need to read a lot in a bear market, okay? Because not enough good ideas will get traction. So the idea is to comb through lists of stocks and find names that you can do some work on and focus on talking to your smartest people in your network because this will turn at some point, right? Um, and when it turns, growth always comes back. It may look differently. It may be semiconductors. It may be biotech. It may be genetics. It may be drones. Um, but if you're down 60%, the, ma the, the mass starts getting staggering about what you have to start making without taking crazy bets. So if you're down 25 to 30, it's not game over. 
but it is about getting yourself mentally prepared for the next bull market. And you don't have to catch the first 20% up of the next bull market. Bull markets are two, 300% index moves, which means thousand to 2000% moves in the leaders. And, you know, I've just been telling so many people this, uh, you know, and it was just on the way down, it was like anti-cash. And I'm like, cash is like, up, US dollars up 8%. You know, and again, yeah. that's about what the inflation rate is, but in a bear market, cash always, always in a, you know, last hundred years, US dollar in a bear market outperforms. This is the first one I even know that buying cheap, like, like, like bonds. I mean, I, I yeah, it used to be the go-to place, you know, during yeah. bear markets, but not not this one. Yeah, every, every bear market and unis is different. And, and high yield, this is just a, a, yeah. a mess. And it makes you feel stupid and dumb every day. Um, I don't know what, and again, this is the first bear market. So many of the CEOs in my portfolio, even mature guys, have really seen. And it's the first one I've seen where we, we, you know, 75 basis point hike, uh, bonds having their worst year ever, you know, um, venture not working. Um, but I do feel that, that acquisitions will happen, even startup acquisitions. I don't know when it will happen. The smartest people that I, that have been right for a few cycles, you know, and I go to Fred Wilson, I was talking about late next year. Um, there's nothing wrong with sitting out a year uh, or six months and coming back to this. And I mean, we've been covering this, what, since November, December, like things started to turn here. Um, but with the indexes below the 200 day, pull up the S&P, Ivan. No. Just not good things happen when you're this far below the, the 200 day moving average. Like you said, though, they're getting short here where in a reversion to the, the mean trade happens will just break your heart or break your spirit. And I just would not be surprised to see some sort of crash, um, especially since they came for energy and everybody's shooting, all the politicians are shooting to hurt the energy companies right now. Um, so, you know, the government's heavily involved in the markets right now somehow. So I think you got to just be extra careful. You know, you're as nimble as they come and you're saying, well, you're 60, 70% cash. Oh, even more than that, like 90% cash. And uh, I'm just nibbling here and there just for short-term trades. Um, like, mm. I mean, I've, I've been pretty conservative uh, in general this year, uh, just protecting capital uh, myself and my clients. Um, but yeah, so far this it's year- It's like talking to your clients. Like this is the first, are you seeing, I mean, your people are, you, like I, I talk to you once a week because I know there's not much to talk about. We'll go running no more, but like, what do you tell people? Like, they're, they, they're, are they second guessing yet? Are they saying, get me out of cash? Or they... Well, well uh, I, I, lately I get the, you know, the occasional text message about, you know, being more aggressive on the short side, you know, it, but that might be a, <laughs> a contrary. Because SQQQ, yeah. which is yeah. like, SQQ, which is the uh, like triple Q, that's all people are talking about, SQQQ. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't understand why. I mean, yeah, this thing could spike to 80 to 100. But like, if you look up FAZ, Ivan, I remember this in 08. This was, uh, I don't know how far back it can go, but. Um, well, the way it's structured is just, it's a broken. Yeah. This, you know. No, but you know what I mean? This is all people talked about in a way. The aftermath of SQ, aftermath of this tech crash, SQQ will be $1 again. Like this will trend back toward the one buck. Yeah, the digital is, is the amazing the thing about the amazing thing that I'm just so aggravated about forgetting CNBC for the moment is this Kathy Woods. It's one thing to be wrong, but if you look, overlay QQ, TQQQ, which is three times leveraged NASDAQ, which is a terrible product because it has daily decay. If you look at a chart of the TQQQ, which is just an That's enormously it. stupid product. Yeah. Okay? And overlay it, I don't know if you can with ARC. I mean, I can, but I don't think it's going to pop up. Uh, I'll tell you what, what you'll see is that this terrible product with daily decay, okay, which is just a stupid three times leverage QQQ has totally crushed Kathy Woods both on the upside and on this in this bear market. Okay, so it should lay a myth 
the idea that like you treat these people like God. Okay, Their whole, her whole incentive is to gather assets. Okay, and you know, shame on the media. It's fun to have like a, a God on the way up, and and they built her up, and now we'll tear her down. But but this is terrible. She's out there now, like talking about the Fed versus like the Fed was the reason her portfolio was up, you know. And so people really need to take this bear market and, 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 and kind of just remember that they can do this themselves and there's products out there that will give them all the excitement that they need on their own. But just handing off your money to people uh, who spend their time on TV and gathering assets is, is not a good idea. And so use this bear market to kind of build uh, you know, a trusted network and some and some people that like pay for some real mentorship. Not just what is your experience, money. Howard, with investing in in hedge funds, like especially crypto hedge funds, which you've been doing? Well, I, I had my own experience of running one, and I cared, but I couldn't beat the market, and it was just the mental frustration that your managers are under to try and beat the market uh, is not healthy. So understand that, like your managers know when they wake up every day that they can't beat the market. And so you're, 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 you're paying those fees. Um, and, and, I, and I would say, if we look at the S&P, I don't know if we pull back up to S&P, and you know this because you've done it a long time. The one great thing about, and it is an amazing thing that uh, Vanguard did and in, 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 in these ETFs, is because of the low fees. You know, forgetting all the, the stuff that I hate and all the all the, the corporate banking ripoffs that go on behind the surface. The one great thing about the American markets is that you can get access to it. It's for as rigged as it is, and this is you know, all the scams like ESG and and all the backdoor dealings. You know, you have access to the American economy, and that is what ten to twelve percent a year. I mean, that's just the number, right? And it's just amazing how much money we all spend and how big an industry it is trying to beat that number. It, 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 it goes in cycles, Howard. I mean, no, but you know, eighty years. What is it? Ten to twelve percent. I mean, it didn't really exist a, uh, eighty years. It's like uh, the spy is relatively new. No, but you're uh, saying the U.S. Years. market is returned on average on average about eight uh, percent. Okay, eight so percent. It goes in, it, it goes in cycles. Like for example, from two thousand to two thousand and let's say ten, it was like no return, right? It was just the dividend. Uh, yeah, yeah, even, yeah, but I'm saying twenty year cycles. I think Josh, yeah. I think I've looked at enough charts to know like if you invest for twenty years, you can expect eight to ten percent. And even without timing. So let's let's so that is market returns, right? So if you're gonna go into the market thinking you're going to become wealthy, and you know, you're generally the sucker in the room. The market is there for helping people uh, grow their wealth and retain their wealth in a diversified way. And this bear market is 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 a reminder that um, you know, it's not that these things don't, don't only go up and manage your expectations to that, you know, eight to 10% annualized return. And what's interesting is all these crypto companies, as much as I've given back in crypto, I cannot believe some of the scale. I never understood these high yielding eight to 12% uh, accounts by like young people fall, both falling for it and promising it. Yeah. And um, the amount of leverage in the system, these aren't, these were never really probably trading on fundamentals, but now they can't trade on any kind of fundamentals because we don't know how much ridiculous leverage is in the system and how many weak hands are actually out there. And at this point, you kind of need the institutions to embrace this, or this, these things will tend towards zero because nobody knows what they own right now. Yeah, many of the international. Uh... Crypto brokerages are offering, you know, hundred to one, two hundred to one leverage, something you know that you cannot get, you know, in the U.S. Uh, in stocks. Yeah. And a lot of people were like really highly leveraged, not just hedge funds, but also regular people. Yeah. And you know what happens during a bear market? You know, those people get uh, wiped out and they become forced sellers. Yeah. There are so many forced sellers, and. Um, you know, 
just don't don't use leverage if you can i mean yeah you don't know who has yeah. leverage in the system is what i'm saying and and you like i don't think i was using leverage but i don't know all the people that i was allocating capital to within crypto through multicoin were using leverage but even if you're not the fact that other people are using so much leverage they're gonna impact your your position right, right? I'm, yeah. I'm i'm impacted which is why i was a, a seller all last year of whatever i could have things and because you could feel the silliness you could feel the leverage in the system you could feel the sloppy behavior but again like i think it's not i mean the good news is the fed has put themselves in a position by next year to get back on the the offensive which is helping end a recession or get rates pushed down like i think you know the japan playbook at some point will come back into play where they just there's so much pain they'll just they have ways to get rates to come back down and um <clears throat> you they've got to tame inflation like what's your what's your feeling about this they got to tame it i mean hopefully we don't become the next japan because if you look at the, the nikkei um, you know average like they haven't really reached their high from you know the 1990 1991 so it's been a really terrible uh 30 years for their stock market and um, no i'm just saying they have a playbook meaning they want americans will never be japan because we spend money americans like to spend and use leverage culture wise japan what didn't work in yeah japan hopefully i mean is they they would send japanese people checks ivan and the japanese would not cash them the government would, would send japanese uh citizens cash to spend and they would not spend yeah the they would save it and they would invest it uh, you know on the us market <laughs> where they can yeah. get some return but so, the yeah go ahead go ahead sorry. no at some point the fed is back will be back in a position to to cut rates and induce growth and um i mean you know, the problem is that work. if they keep doing what the japanese government is doing like buying unlimited amount of government bonds so they can keep interest rates low at some point they're going to break the us dollar That's no doubt point, so no doubt hiding out in the us dollars i'm saying i'm on borrowed time like I, i'm not trusting of the fed but what i am saying they can do is stimulate the, again how they do it is dangerous i get it. and it's a little over my pay grade but they are trying to break inflation which is basically was their job to kind of get in front of this so they'll probably overshoot on the other side of this ivan but it puts those investors that like are being conservative and keeping their heads about them in a position to ride the next growth wave because growth will return yeah and, and tech yeah. is deflationary tech is deflationary you know um you know tech products are deflationary by nature anyways are you seeing anything that looks good like i i, I was looking for some i mean i mean lately like i mean it might sound funny but you know chinese adrs are kind of looking no but like i mean how, how do you with like good faith trade i know it, it's really hard like, to put yourself in that situation but just you know But looking, they are in a position where they can cut rates there, right? I mean, like, looking on a, on a daily, some of them are kind of, you know, flattening yeah. and maybe offering, you know, some short-term opportunities. But it's, I it mean, I guess from contrarian though, at this point, it's like from, trading colors. Yeah, from contrarian viewpoint, you know, no one wants to touch them yeah. right now. So maybe this is why they, some of them are working. No, no, no so, doubt. I mean, that's that's for that's just they're just on my do not touch list. Yeah. Um, so is there anything in in, in their biotech showing any kind and of And then work? yeah, I mean there is the occasional, you know, biotech that is kind of acting but they're they're super choppy. Yeah, like no therapeutics. Look at you finding these. Okay, what's the weekly look like on that? Yeah. I mean it's just sideways chop as of right now which, you know, I mean in a bear market so many of of the breakouts are going to fail. We're losing and, healthcare, well, we're losing XLP. So we're losing xlv so many of the gaps are getting faded it's just it's it's basically the rules that help you make a lot of money in a bull market you kind of get, have to reverse in a bear market like if you see a big gap it's probably going to get faded in a bear market so you better be short for you know for the for a day trade in a bull market you buy the big gaps because this is usually the beginning of a you know 100% move so yeah. you kind of the rules are reversed 
Um, yeah, and I, I tell you, the scariest chart is to me semiconductors. They led on the way up, and they're finally really underperforming. And I don't see any kind of support to like a 160 to, you know, it just, yeah. I mean, and you know, the, that's generally been a, I mean, that's a scary business. And, and we've got the tear, anyways. So, you know, these look terrible after having yeah. generational kind of runs. I mean, AMD yeah. went from what, what was it like? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not like these didn't have two to 140, but, so yeah, I don't know. And the technicals didn't really matter on the way up. So all those people like trying to play technicals on the way down. Wow, uh, Nvidia, four two. Yeah, so, you know, you can understand why sellers will continue to show up because they're gonna, there's still some people with massive gains in these. Um, and then you have to be really careful about owning individual stocks in these bear markets because you don't know how many we can own your stock, even if it's a great company and are forced to sell. So, um, so anyways, I look forward to running on the beach. Yeah, see you tomorrow. What are you man. doing with your time? Like, are you, are you screen watching or are you like, what do you, what do you, what do you tell people to do with their time when there's not much going on? Um, just study uh, past winners and uh, just refine your trading system. You know, I'm constantly running my, um, a couple of my screen, you know, one is just for stocking an uptrend lately. It's been almost empty. And then another screen that I run is just uh, high relative volume, which tends to produce, you know, good ideas every single day for some, you know, short term moves. So there's always something to do if you want to do something. You know, the question is, do you really want to be that active in this environment? Um, yeah, so I agree. All right, my man. Good to see you. I'll see you tomorrow. In All right. Person. Yeah. See, you tomorrow. see you, everybody.